Okay. Wow, I haven't been on camera in a while. <laughs> I haven't made a YouTube video in a minute. Probably like a month. Sorry, everyone, uh, for not making more YouTube videos recently. I've been working a lot and haven't had time. I've been shooting a lot of 35 millimeter color film recently and I figured it would be a cool idea to show you guys how I scan my film. Basically all you need is a flatbed scanner. I use the Epson V550. You can use whatever you want. Uh, the V600 actually comes with digital ice, which can be kind of nice because it removes like dust and other, I don't know, objects from the film. But if you guys have a Mac, there's a possibility that it might give you some sort of message where it says like you can't run this software or you, it needs to be updated or something along those lines. But you actually don't need to. You can just exit out of that message. It won't open the app, but if you click the app again, it shouldn't show you the message a second time and then it'll just run normally. First, you're gonna remove the white backslide so that you can actually scan the negatives. Otherwise, this is just a normal flatbed scanner. Once you turn on the scanner and open Epson scan, get through the message, take a pause for a hot second and load your film into the holder. You're gonna need to take cut 35 millimeter frames like this um, and put it in a scanner holder like this and it goes in here. And then you'll need one of these blow whatever these are, these blow things. Rockets, maybe is what they're called, I'm not sure. But these are for blowing the dust and hair or whatever else is on your negatives off so that they're nice and clean for your scans. Unless you like the look of dirty scans, then don't use it. For scanning these, uh, I don't tend to wear gloves. People like to wear gloves, but you don't actually have to. Just touch the edges of the frames so that you're not actually touching the negatives and you should be fine. Unless you're super, super specific about keeping your negatives like pristine, it should be fine for the most part. Or just get some gloves, they're super cheap on Amazon. To scan the film, just put it in the holder, but make sure the emulsion side is up. This is the cloudy side, so that the scanner is scanning the clean side of the film. When you open up Epson scan, it's actually going to open up in the default screen where it's full auto. This is not what you want unless you really don't know what you're doing. But even for the most part, if you don't know what you're doing, you can go into professional mode. Um, it's really not that hard to use as you'll see. So go into the mode options and go to professional mode. This will give you all the options you need in order to make like a really nice, clean, flat scan that you want. Now I know we're in professional mode. I'm not a professional, but for the most part, I know how to use this. So just keep that in mind while you're watching this. The first thing I always do is make sure the document type is on film. Uh, for obvious reasons, you don't want reflective. The only time you'd be using reflective is if you're scanning like prints or scanning a photo or something along those lines. And then the film type should be color negative. Unless you're doing slide film, then it'd be positive. If you're doing black and white, black and white. Pretty straightforward. So for image type, I would stick to 48 bit color just so you don't have to worry about any color banding issues. Um, but you also can do 24 bit color and it shouldn't be a problem for the most part. And then the resolution for scans, I always keep it at like 1200 to 3200. If you really want a lot of detail in your scans, you can do 3200 and you can actually push it to 4800. But what I've noticed with 4800 is it doesn't actually give you more detail. It just makes the file size bigger. I stick to 1200 unless I really need some like crazy detail that I don't go to 3200, but for the most part, I just stick to 1200. Make sure to turn off unsharp mask because you wanna do all your sharpening after the scan. You shouldn't do any sharpening during the scan. It just is kind of unnecessary. And then make sure to click the configuration settings to turn off continuous auto exposure or every time you make a selection, it's gonna do an auto exposure for you. And it's kind of really annoying when you're making a selection and it keeps changing it and you can't actually like set a manual exposure. Click preview to preview your scans and switch to normal mode instead of thumbnail mode. Cause in thumbnail mode, it'll choose your compositions for you or choose the selections for you. And we wanna make our own selections. So go to normal mode. So in normal mode, this is where you make the selections. I usually make a selection, not the entire size of the photo, just kind of close to the edges. And then I expose it properly with the levels graph and then stretch it back out to the sides in order to get the entire negative, just because sometimes the outer edges of the scans will make the uh, levels off, and then you're exposing for the back of the scanner or the light from the scanner, things like that. If the shoots are done on similar film and similar light, 
You can copy paste the selection and just make slight adjustments to the exposure as needed. And then to select multiple or all of the current selections that you have, you can either do Command A or Command Shift and click the ones that you want to scan and it'll make a little zebra outline um, around the ones that you've selected. And then before you click scan, make sure to click the folder icon next to the scan. And this is where you can actually choose where the scans are being saved to. So in this case, I'll save them to my desktop. If you want to change the file type, you can do that here too. I would suggest either JPEG or TIFF. TIFF if you want like a good combo of detail and compression. If you don't really care about detail quite as much, then you can do JPEG. After that, you can just click scan and you're good to go. You can check to make sure they came out all right on the desktop and then continue the process for the rest of the film. So that's how you scan 35 millimeter film. If you guys want to see a tutorial video on how I edit these in Lightroom or Photoshop, just make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll make it. Uh, I think that's it. All right, bye.